Hi, I'm Mike Rothman, and welcome to Song and Wine, Brooklyn Art Song Society series where we discuss our upcoming concerts over a glass of wine. I'm joined today by Spencer Meyer, pianist, and Mario Diaz Moresco, baritone. They are gracing our presence on November 2nd for part two of American Iconoclasts which features the songs of Samuel Barber. Let's just go around the room, as it were, and what's your favorite song that you're performing on this concert, and why? My favorite is The Daisies. Uh, I know it's, it's an early work um, and one of the uh, slightest of his outputs, but to me it's just one of those songs that's perfect. It's the way that it's written, the text, the sentiment, the, he captures it so perfectly. Um, and it's just this beautiful little gem, and, and uh, I just, I love it so much. Um, I think for me, um, from the Opus 45 set, the, the Boundless, Boundless Evening, the last song of the, the set of three songs, for a lot of the same reasons, I think it's, um, it just captures so much in such a short time, not as short as the daisies, but um, it, it, it's, it captures his great... Um, ability to create atmospheres and and to to kind of cut straight to the soul um, it's just just a beautiful beautiful song there's a lot of slyly subversive things yeah. to be found in his songs even I think in the the day song like the daisies that's the same it's almost there's something almost rebellious about how simple it is so uh, the next sort of topic that I, I wanted to talk is a little more broad about Samuel Barber. I think the the term that people use to describe Samuel Barber is a neo-romantic. What would you say neo-romanticism is? And would you say that is uncontroversially a good way to describe Samuel Barber? Should there be an asterisk? Is that a terrible way to describe Samuel Barber? Um, I, I think it's interesting with Barber, c coming from my perspective as, as I, I, I play a lot with singers, but I also play a lot of solo music, having explored some of, of Barber's solo music, like the Sonata. Um, I feel like he 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 finds his neo romantic voice more in his songs. His his solo music is pretty gritty and very kind of out there mm -hmm. harmonically. And um, but but in terms of in terms of your question, I think a, a very simple answer is basically a, a composer who who goes in that direction amidst a time when everybody was not going in that direction. Everybody was going in a much more um, like I said gritty. Um, contemporary sounding using yeah. dissonance and and, and um, clashing um, so I think and I think Barbara really like I said Barbara really found that voice with the songs yeah They're much much more romantic than a lot of the instrumental music and so, I and I think that goes for the operas as well yeah you look at a piece mm -hmm. like Vanessa which is you know mostly tonal but then it does have moments that veer off in, Very, into a little bit of craziness mm -hmm. um and then especially if you look at something like anthony anthony and cleopatra that's yeah. you know that's a horse of a different color when you when you look at between that and the songs yeah and i think uh, going along the idea that people call him a romantic in the songs he certainly finds this beautiful lushness yeah. in harmony and in color and in texture that i think that we associate with the romantic composers of the 19th century um and a great example of that is boundless evening it's yeah. The color is <laughs> is stumptious. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. To me, the rom Barber's romanticism kind of boils down, in my mind, to this this essence that in the twentieth century, the direction of music was outward from the composer, in that composers tried you know things like serialism mm -hmm. and aleatoric music and chance music like John Cage tried to take away the subjective emotions of the composer mm. and put it out in the world. And that's why sort of mathematic principles become yeah. more important and chance. And Barber, the more the world went that way, the more Barber, Barber's music goes inward mm -hmm. and about his own personal feelings and or just personal feelings in general. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the essence of his sort of romanticism. Because the music can often be somewhat atonal mm -hmm. or yeah. dissonant you know he's not he, and oh no and rhythmically you know as 
complex as like Stravinsky and, and that that's not what I think makes him you know in that way he's a very much a 20th century composer yeah but this inward this spirit of of it that it's always sort of emotionally driven and yeah exactly and that you know I think a returning topic in all of the songs from from the beginning to the end is loneliness and aloneness mm. and how many songs are you doing that have something to do with being alone somehow. Yeah. That's an interesting point, but you know, you look at the march of art and culture in the 20th century, and it is increasingly about the isolation uh, of modern Malise. That's what modernity, that's what defines modernity from the rest of creative output is the fact that we are increasingly alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and obviously he felt that very acutely. Yeah. It's also interesting that you bring up the point that other composers along, and this is a trend that we saw in, in art in the 20th century as well, is that they were constantly moving towards abstraction, you know, and composers were doing the same thing and that in all mediums, people were resistant to that. You know, Barber did constantly strive to, to create um, music where someone was having an emotional experience that was tangible. Mm. And, that, and that is maybe what defines him as a, as a neo-romanticist. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the, the, the title of the overarching series is American Iconoclast. Yeah. To me, an iconoclast is someone who forges their own path, mm. right? Who, yeah. who doesn't not follow rules, just makes their own rules and mm -hmm. is actually in certain ways more rigid with their own rules than the people who attempt to follow the rules with the capital letters yeah. are. And, you know, and Barber was true to himself to the end. Like, he, he, he never felt the need to experiment with serialism. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he, you know, he was sort of, in some ways, bitter and resentful about the direction music was going in. Right. But he stuck to his guns. There's something to be respected exactly. about, about that. And even, I think, even his most neo-romantic songs and his most neo-romantic music it's still unquestionably him. Yeah, he, he found his language and he found his voice, and and that's that's uh, all, all five of the composers you're featuring this season are are fall in that category. Like yeah, just that, yeah, they're all composers where you hear them and you know it's them, and like there's yeah. nothing, there's no doubt. And that's the mark of any great artist is that they they have their signature. You know, you listen to any great singer, you recognize their voice. It's the same with painters; you recognize their work immediately. Any great cinema auteur, you know, the difference between a Hitchcock and a Buñuel, it's recognizable immediately. And, you know, all of these great artists, they have in common that they've truly found their voice. And speaking of voice, this is a, a good segue to my final topic. Um, one of the things uh, that's great about Art Song and the Brooklyn Art Song Society in general is that I can pair people together who are not just artistic matches but real life matches <laughs> and I think that's always a very special experience for them as performers and also for the audience um, to, you know there's a different energy yeah. that that I think is really nice so specifically in preparing for this concert how has you felt your dynamic as both a couple and a duo partner uh, has affected your um, study of Barber. <laughs> he creates these these beautifully lush and intimate moments um, and one of the great things that I love about Samuel Barber is that he creates these incredible phrases um, for, for both the pianist and, and the singer but specifically for the singer because there are a lot of composers who are not as attuned to how to build a really a really successful phrase for a singer um, but Barber does that and within that there is a lot of flexibility and nuance that is required and when you get to do that with the person that you're with every day and you know it just makes it all that much easier and, and much more natural before this devolves too much more into couples therapy <laughs> um, that seems like a good place to uh, end our conversation we hope you'll join us uh, on Friday November 2nd at 7 30 p.m. American Iconoclast 2 Samuel Barber at the Brooklyn Historical Society Tickets are on sale now at brownpapertickets.com. And um, thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers. Another good cowpuncher has gone to meet his fate. I hope he'll find a resting place within the 
golden gate, the golden gate. On other places vacant on the ranch of the XIT, it will be hard to find.